Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been doing using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, you know, just looking at my list of topics, I think the top one on my mind is, uh, if you use any live streaming software, uh, what do you use? So we'll talk about that toward the end. So let's take a look at the pens. From left to right, Stipula Etruria with t Flex, Aurora 88 which is getting close to empty, but not quite there yet. Uh, Caveco V14S, which is taking forever to get empty. Lamy 2000, which I've refilled with the same ink. Hero 718, which usually runs out of ink quickly, but because I have so many pens inked up right now, it's still going. Um, Italics Parsons Essential. A Selector 123 with an extra fine nib. No, a fine nib. Take that back. A Visconti Homo Sapiens. Schaefer, whoops. Schaefer Legacy 2. Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Plat yes, there's a lot of pens this week. <laughs> Platinum 3776. And finally, back again, the Nakaya Decapod Twist. As always, I'll be doing my writing samples in my Bomo Art Journal. I just happened to notice as I'm setting up here that last week's writing sample, which was the same pen, bled through to this week's, but that's all the further it bled through. So I apparently was laying down a lot of ink there, and weirdly enough, like I said, it's my first pen for this week, too. So, my first pen, oops, let's just zoom out a little so you can actually see the pen. My first pen is this uh, Stipula Etruria. This is one of those pens that, honestly, I uh, have had some regrets over. Not that it's a bad pen, just that I have some issues with writing with it. I... Uh, I think it's attractive. It feels really good to hold. It just uh, the nib has been a bear. And it's actually developed a new issue uh, with this ink. So I think it's ink specific, not really related to the pen. I've never seen this particular ink do any crusting before. And it's actually crusting a little. So that's interesting. So this is my Stipula Etruria. Uh, let's write the whole name. Prisma 88 Magma with T Flex. And you see, it likes this ink. I mean, you've seen me write with this pen before. I have a lot of trouble. And yet, this ink. I, I wrote a whole page of a letter. I mean, admittedly, it was a very pale page. I uh, Was it last week we had the snow and I wrote my little post with this pen and then nobody could read it? But, uh, yeah, it's it likes this ink. So now I need to try some other uh, Stipula ink. Or, what is this? Rohr and Klingner inks in it. You know, they have some very nice colors. They're black. Oops, there we said some skipping. Their black isn't one of my favorites, but, uh, you know, their blue mare, mare is very attractive. I've heard that that's either Latin or Italian. Now, <laughs> how the emphasis is that Latin or Italian? Sunflower, anyway. So, since we're talking about Italians, here comes my Italian pen. I was going to send it off for repairs this uh, spring right there but um, with 
various viral things going around, I decided I'd keep it at home until that's all settled. Just too much chaos in the world, and I spent, well, a ridiculous amount of money to buy this pen, so I'd prefer to send it when things are just more stable. do like the pen, though. Uh, this is a worthy successor to those vintage ones that I love so much. Uh, the ink in this one is Robert Oster. Jade. And, of course, I own no jewelry. <laughs> no jade jewelry, for sure. Uh, it's not really the color I think of when I think of jade. But then I have to remind myself... Okay, have you ever actually seen Jade in real life or just looked at pictures of it? Okay, got a point there. And even though it's not my mental picture of Jade, I think it's very attractive. Which is how I ended up with a bottle of it and why this pen's almost empty. Because a lot of my pen pals and a lot of my, well, even my uh, school writing and stuff has been with this pen. Because I enjoy it. It feels good in my hand. I I think when I get around to doing its revisit, which I think is a few years off yet, I try and wait at least four years before I do a revisit, um, I'm going to have a lot of good things to say about it. More even than the first time I did a video. This is uh, my Caveco V14S. This I love this pen. This is the pen that got me into the vintage world. Um, I bought this one and a Reform 1745 together, and wow, <laughs> I use it too much. If there is such a thing. So, it has a fine nib on it. This isn't a flex nib pen, this isn't one for calligraphy, this is one that you just, you write with it and it disappears in your hand. Uh, the ink in it is another good workhorse type ink, um, Pilot Blue Black. Not, you know, an exciting ink, uh, just a very attractive color. This is actually the ink that finally got me to notice blue black inks and blues. So I've never really been into blue before. And it just. And this pen is stingy enough with the ink that it's probably going to be a while yet before it runs out. This is not a pen that's going to bleed through the paper. Oh, did this bleed through? Nope, didn't bleed through this time. All right, then we've got my daily writer. I refill this one a number of times, every time. Um usually put it to bed for the summer. It got an extended nap this winter because I was just trying out different pens as my daily writers. found a few that I do like. But there is just something about the Lamy 2000. Very uh, retro future looking pen, if that makes any sense. Uh, the ink in it is Pelican. Why not Lamy Black? I don't know. I have still a quarter of a bottle of that. Maybe I, I should wash this out and uh, use up my Lamy Black. Then I can pour an ink out of a miserable bottle into that nice Lamy bottle, because I love the Lamy bottles. Somebody asked me about showing the bottles of ink as I do this show, and I... I didn't want to because it's just too many bottles to keep out, and I live in a small house. But we'll just show you this Lamy bottle because it is on my desk. Looks flat and kind of uh. I'll tell you, pop the this off. Makes it. I mean, maybe you don't get every last drop of ink, but you get pretty close. All right, then I come to my Hero 718, H718. This I saw on, um, oh shoot, what was his name? 
It's a channel that hasn't done a video in a long time. He's based in Hong Kong. He posts on Instagram a lot, but hardly ever does uh, videos anymore. But I saw it on his channel, and I wanted it. And, uh, you know, I am not the uh, Chinese pen channel. That's more Chris Rap 52 I'm just not that... I mean, there's some that I like, but there, it's not something I uh, that's a, much of an interest of mine. Uh, but I was really interested in this one. So this ink is Stipula. Musk green. Just kind of a murky, swampy color, and I love it. You know, I grew up in a much wetter place than where I live now. I grew up in Pennsylvania. And this just kind of reminds me of, like, stagnant pools and swamps and things out in the woods you know we had a swamp near the house um a whole bunch of lady slippers would grow every spring and just well there's nothing like that out here i mean the plains have their own kind of beauty but they don't have that kind of beauty so i don't know where how i get from murky musk green to a beautiful pink lady slipper but whatever <laughs> there you go this is a pen a viewer sent to me a while back. I actually, he sent me two nibs with it, and I have the finer nib in it. I remember I liked the broader nib, but for some reason I have the finer nib. And actually, that lacquer is kind of attractive. Now, I don't know what the current status of uh, Parsons, or Italics is. I feel like I just read something recently about them, and I don't remember what it was. Probably doesn't matter. So this has a fine nib on it. Uh, the ink is, it's a little bottle. I'm kind of thinking maybe it'd be fun to use it up. Then I get that victory of, hey, another bottle out of the collection. They are neat bottles, though, these little Colorverse bottles. Uh, what is this one called? Pale Blue Dot. And I like the theme behind them. And, you know, this is a nice color. I have a Jupiter or something or other from them that's a nice color. Um, you know, if I didn't already have way too much ink, I might consider getting a few bottles from this company. I like their uh, focus on science, even though it means absolutely nothing. Uh, I like their science-y type names. And I guess they've gotten into, what, Office or something. They've gotten... Some other names that are not so sciencey, but whatever. I enjoy it. But I have so many inks, and uh, I just wanted to enjoy what I have for a while. And you know, of course, with uh, current events, I'm not doing much buying. Uh, I was surprised. Tomorrow's payday for me, and I was surprised how much more money is in my bank account this, this time than usual. And uh, that was with a big insurance bill. And, uh, you know, and I don't mean just because of the $1,200 stimulus check I got. I mean, I apparently have not been spending like I usually do. So, something to reevaluate for myself after this is all over. So, this is a Selector 123. It's a Dutch brand. Uh, I have a very pretty Selector with an amazing flex nib. This isn't it. <laughs> uh, but... This is a pen I've had for years. This is actually my first Selector. And I was... I thought I was grabbing my Cora. And I didn't notice until I had this one in my hand. And, you know, uncapped. Oh, that's not the Cora. And I thought, have I actually done a review on it? And no. Uh, one thing I've discovered in the time since I bought it. I used to think it was scratchy and just hopeless to work with. But I have discovered that... It's not so much that as it's a very, very fine, fine nib. Uh, and it also definitely has a sweet spot. You can see at the beginning here, I was off the sweet spot. When I get to the word Colorverse, I'm more on the sweet spot. Uh, it's just a interesting pen. Uh, but, you know, the way it writes, though, I'm pretty sure it's going to be with me for a few weeks. Because we don't run through ink very quickly when we write like this. So, kind of a shame. I, I guess I should have put a... 
maybe a less interesting ink in it. But it is also interesting sometimes to look at how different an ink looks just on with a different pen or with different paper. So there's something to that also. See, this ink might have been fun in my Visconti Homo Sapiens. But that is not to be. I have heard that uh, Visconti is, is uh, going away from these palladium nibs and going back to gold nibs, which is interesting. What color is it? Oh. I know there have been complaints about Visconti. I haven't really had trouble with the writing experience. The main trouble I've had is a couple of times when I first got it, it just blooped ink into the cap, which was gross. Um... And it also isn't always the most enthusiastic about filling. But as far as the writing experience, I have no complaints whatsoever. I think it's wonderful. Uh, this is the pen that actually kind of soften, softened me up for larger pens. There may be a video about a large pen coming in the future. All right, this is my Schaefer Legacy 2. This is one I bought from Venice Pens. And I knew right away that, wow, I got a good pen. You know, not as vintage as some in my collection more of a 90s type of pen, but uh, an interesting special edition type pen. By the way, you can probably start to see the sheen on the Homo Sapiens here. Just a fun series of German inks that have a very high sheen. This ink does not have sheen. This is a different sort of ink. This is a, um, what is this one? Rohr and Klingner I'm drawing a blank if it's Scabiosa or what the heck it is. I wrote Helianthus on my on my list, so that really helps not at all. I'm pretty sure it's Scabiosa because I think Salix is the blue one. So we'll go with Scabiosa. Anyway, it's a uh, Iron Gall ink. They're kind of interesting. I. Uh, one of these days I need to do a video where I talk about the chemistry of iron gall inks and what makes them different. Um, and one of those ideas that's written down that I just need to sit down and do it. And you'd think I'd have more time now that I'm home all the time and not spending any evenings at school. But, you know, you spend your whole day on the computer and I'm finding I really don't want to spend any more time on my computer. Then I'm just like, yeah, I want to go deal with something real for a while. I guess the pens are real. So there is that. Anyway, that got depressing. <laughs> Pilot Custom Heritage 92. This is a fun pen. I uh, I like the demonstrator-ness. Somebody on, uh, I think it was Fountain Pen Network, was talking about how demonstrators stain. And, you know, do you dare ink up your demonstrators? I'm, yeah! Yeah! Uh, they, sorry, my phone just buzzed, which scared me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I do. I don't mind if they stain. There's a, if I show you this cleaned out, there's some specks in the cap that just don't come out. And there's a couple other spots. And, you know, main, I think partly it's because I always use the same ink in it. But, uh, I don't care. That's part of being a demonstrator. So this is a Pilot Custom Heritage 92 with a broad nib in it. And the ink is the lovely Noodler's Matahari's Cordial. Of course, my concern is when I use up this bottle 
will I like the next bottle as well? You know, one of the concerns I have with noodlers is Nathan Tardiff, the owner of the company, and I think the only employee, sees it as a selling point that the inks are made inconsistently and then you can show that, oh, no, it's from this batch, not this batch. I personally would rather know exactly what I'm getting every time I get it. So when I was going to film this video originally, I was going to not have this pen in it at all because uh, it wasn't inked up. I had just inked up a Waterman's Taperite, the one that wasn't shattered, uh, the Canadian one, with uh, Omos Gray. And I've got a notebook over there. I don't really feel like getting up to get it. But I uncap the pen and go to write, and bloop, I have gray ink everywhere. Yep, the thing erupted in the cap. So I need to figure out what happened there. But I really wanted to write with Omos Gray because I haven't for a long time. So, uh, you know, it was, either, it was down to like ink up the Omos Ojiva, but I think I want something bright and happy in it. Or uh, ink up something else. So I like this has a coarse nib that's a. Uh, Platinum's version of Double Broad. So, it's actually doing pretty well. Of course, Platinum, or sorry, Omas is no more. Sadly. Uh, this is such a wide, fat nib. It's hard. This is one I like to show off in ink. And I, the thing I like about Omos Gray, and, you know, if I use a gray ink, they can be very evocative, uh, very, uh, the shading can be interesting. You know, part of me wonders, do they just make them by dumping some extra water in their black ink? I don't know. But uh, you know, a whole page written in gray especially if it's the right gray, can really just set a mood. I have a Robert Oster uh, Summer Storm that's a nice gray, and then a Robert Oster Thunderstorm that's a very different kind of gray. And, you know, they they really evoke that feeling. The thunderstorm really looks like an angry sky that's a, oh, God, we're going to get some hail. And the summer storm is more like just one of those nice storms that happens in the summer, and you're just like, oh, we needed the water. Uh, need the water here because it's so dry we're we're just a step above being a desert here in southwest north dakota all right my last pen last week had an embarrassing incident where it ran out of ink in the middle of me filming uh, so it is inked up again with a different ink so i filled it and refilled it and refilled it with sailor gentle epinard I decided it was time for a change. Uh, I had some suggestions of browns, which I think that's what's going to happen next. Um, my brain went to green. Someone I heard it's not Nakai, it's Nakia. I don't remember where I heard that. I just wrote Nak. Oh no, I did spell it right. Nakia Decapod. Twist. If you can't tell, this has a soft, fine nib. And the ink in it is Pelican Edelstein Olivine. I kind of like uh, the bottles for the Edelstein, they're, they're not real practical, but they're very pretty, like perfume bottles or something. Uh, you know, their colors, they're okay. I like this one. I uh, don't care for the price as well. But I'm not buying inks right now anyway, so who cares? I'm just going to enjoy the ones I have, and that's one I have. Before I leave this world under the camera B, I just want to show you one other thing. So uh, part of my pen restoration series, I've been restoring pens. So I got this Escritor Juniors working, which is a Argentine pen. And I was all set. It was supposed to be a video this week. I was going to do a writing sample and a first impression with it because I could. 
And so I, tr I filmed video footage where I rehydrated the cartridge. It's now three days later, and the ink is still... Uh, I'm trying to think what to compare it to, like scum floating around in the water in the cartridge. So I'm thinking, ah, uh, no. So then I thought, well, that looks a lot... And I tried this in the video. It looks a lot like a uh, Schaefer. So I got this puppy out. Uh, and uh, filled it with water. It worked perfectly. Luckily, I decided to uh, just kind of on the spur of the moment, because I was just going to show this this pen during this video, and that was going to be that. And then I was going to film its first impression as soon as I got done filming this. Well, I won't be filming that first impression, because as you can see, the cartridge fits beautifully. As far as length, it should fit. And then there's that. So, what I need to do is locate, because I don't feel secure using these uh, Escrito cartridges anymore, I need to locate some Schaefer ink cartridges. I don't think I have any. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't. So I'm going to have to locate some. So uh, maybe placing an order online after all this is over. So that's where I'm at with that pen. So I'm going to film a first impression, just not of that one. But I did clean out several pens in the process of actually my very first video. Let me grab the other two if they're not over here. So if I'm getting the urge to film any pen videos, oops. So if I'm getting the urge to film any pen videos, I do have a few options. This is a PAX, which uh, I'll have to look at my notes. To, I think it's Hungarian, but I wouldn't swear to it. Uh, I just need to... Oh yeah, I remember. The piston's tight, so I wanted to put a lubricated ink in it to see how I... What, how it was. So that one's not quite ready. This one is a, what is this one? Anyway, it's not a Escritor, but it's another Argentine pen. Kind of modeled after the Parker 51, I think. I'm pretty sure it says here what it is. Let me pull this over into the light. Hmm. I can't make that out. But I could film a video on this. It's got a... Very similar to a Parker 51 there also. I need my loop to read that, I think. My Bolograph, which is a Swedish pen. This isn't the one where I fixed the nib, though. This is another one. This one just needed some cleaning. I have a Geha 726, which I just got working. I have a Rex pen of some sort. It needs a, a converter though, so I'll have to find a converter. So that might actually be a good one for a vintage pen video uh, repair thing where I talk about sizing converters for unknown pens. I have a Rex pen. I don't remember off the top of my head what it's... not a Rex pen, uh, a Reform. I don't remember off the top of my head what its number is, so I'll have to look that up before I film the video, but it has a reform nib on it. And I have a Parker drawing a blank all of a sudden about what its number is. Dang, I knew just a few minutes ago. But anyway, that'll be interesting. That's a from a Finnish bank. And I have a well, all kinds of projects over here. I have an Astura which definitely needs to see the light of day because it's very pretty. I have a Luxor, oh, I'm thinking it slides and it doesn't, which is, eh. I have a Pevdi, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just covered with pens. Uh, this is a Hemi, Hemni, something like that. Hema, wow. Freshly restored and cleaned. Most of these are here because they were cleaned and that's all they needed. Um, Marcant, East German pen. Here it is, my Bolograph that uh, what I found out when I would cap it. This is another Swedish pen. I found out when I would cap it, the tines would get twisted around. 
So I just pulled out the nib and feet and put them back in properly. I know it doesn't look so good in here. I, I think that's staining because I couldn't get it out. So I'm going to, I have a few inks that are good at removing stains. So its first taste of ink will probably be one of those. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Uh, I have been busy doing things pen related, just not filming them. I uh, will try to do better. I will film a first impression of at least one of these right after I get this uploaded. So I'll probably just, yeah. Anyway, you don't care how I do it. <laughs> you just want it done. So anyway, I will get that done. Um, I'm leaning heavily toward the Astora because I'm just picturing a certain ink in it. So uh, that may be the route I go. And I may do just do one of the bolographs so I can have a, a Swedish pen appear on the channel. Uh, in other exciting news, you may have seen that I did some live streaming with Pierre Gustafson this week. We did a we did a chat on Instagram. I didn't know that a one on one chat like that would be public. So uh, that was a little awkward when I realized people were streaming comments up. And, it, you know, it's all on this tiny little telephone screen because, heaven forbid, Instagram lets you use a actual computer. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't really make them out or anything. But it enables, enabled us to set up how to do a video. So we, we did a trial run with Skype, um, which he has uploaded. Uh, we're talking, you know, we want to do the real video down the road soon. And uh, we're talking about that I may host a video. Now, I'm probably going to do it a little differently than he does. Because uh, I have learned, although I haven't practiced with this yet, that Skype, you can put the two people on the screen together. You know, what I was finding talking on Skype was I just saw him and I was just this little thumbnail. But I guess you can change that setting. So I'm going to try to figure out how to do that or else maybe use zoom and uh which i would have to also learn how to do <laughs> and uh try to you know just do it all right on the machine because i think that would be a lot cleaner and uh the sound would be better because uh you know i was my sound was coming through an ipad so we'll see i i've got to figure it all out um so yeah that's where i if you do know good software for live streaming that could do that where we're both on screen and, you know, where we're both full screen would be awesome because I think, or even if the software is smart enough to switch between us, that might be kind of fun too. Because, you know, if he's writing and talking, then uh, it shows his screen. If I'm writing and talking, it shows my screen. So something like that I think would be interesting uh, if it could handle a multi-camera setup. Um... So I showed you my uh, latest repair adventures. I have a... Oh, that's yeah, out of reach. I had another Escritor during last week when I was talking about removing the section uh, that I couldn't remove the section. So I did one of those techniques that a few people suggested. I just put the nib and feed end and like a little a much of the section in, in water and let it soak. Uh, by the next day, it had softened up enough that I was able to remove the section, pour out the broken bits of sack, and the shattered J-bar. Now, why am I smiling about that? Because I want to do a video on pressure bars, and I didn't have a pen that needed a new J-bar. I had pens that needed new pressure bars, you know, the button fillers, but none that needed a new J-bar, so I've got one now. So I'm happy about that. I just hope I have a J-bar that fits it. So, uh, yeah, let's see. This computer keeps going to sleep. I Hopefully it's still recording audio when it does that. Um, I wanted to just mention, because I was asked about this, what's my system for pulling out pens and having them in this pens in use. I'll be honest. I want a pen that writes black. I would like another pen I can use, like in notes, that's a different color, but a good writing pen. So the Lamy 2000, the Caveco V14S, those have been kind of serving that role just lately. Uh, I like to have something fun. And I, want, I want something I can correct with, although now all my correcting is virtual because I'm not touching any papers. <laughs> so um, 
I guess I don't need a correcting pen. But anyway, uh, other than that, I'll just look at my pens and you know, I like a, a variety of nibs because my writing that I do for myself is most often just with the Lamy 2000 or the Caveco. My writing in letters and stuff or when I'm brainstorming and just feel like that color gives me a creative boost, that's all over the place. And that's part of what it does. Like, if I'm trying to visualize something kind of gloomy, uh, that wouldn't be a very gloomy pen. <laughs> uh, this has that nice Omos gray in it. Um, you know, it just helps me visualize and gets me in the mood. Uh, the finishes just kind of excite my creativity. Now, when I write, I want it... You know, the pen disappears, it's all up here. But somehow the pen and ink and uh, the way it's writing all become part of it when I'm brainstorming or sketching or whatever. So uh, so I just kind of, ooh, pretty, or oh, I haven't written with that one in a while. Kind of random, grab a pen. And I don't like to have too many inked up. This 12 is my max. Uh, usually there's a couple more off screen, but not right now. This is everything that's inked up that... That a screen tour was going to be off screen, but I guess not. Um, and yeah, that's how I roll. So, uh, again, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, since it's of very immediate interest to me, do you have a good advice for live streaming software that would be useful for two people to talk on the internet and to record the results? If so, leave a comment down below. And as always, I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.